morning to all of you and praise the Lord. This is a good day that the Lord has given us and we really thank him for the far that he has brought us. We know that we have been meeting online for a while now and we thank God because of all that we have been able to do. This is the Fountain of Wisdom Chapel welcoming you for our service this morning and saying that we have something good and something special that is coming from the Lord for each and every one of us. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I want to thank you because you're going to be with us from the beginning of the service to the end and we believe that God is going to minister unto you even unto your needs and everything that you desire let the Lord know about it today. We want to thank God also because this far he has brought us and we know that in the coming Sunday we will most likely be having our normal service in the church and we want to thank God because of all that we have been able to do. We want to welcome you for the service also this coming Sunday. But even if you are not able to join us, we shall still have our online service just the way we have been having it. And so we say welcome this morning for our service. Let us be able to have a heart that is ready to receive from God. And I know that the word of God that changes not shall be able to do something in your life. It shall be able to bring you to a place of strength even in these difficult times. I welcome you for the service and pray that all will go well, even for each and every one of you. Thank you very much and may God bless you. Praise the Lord once again. It's a blessing to see you all again. And as we prepare to get to the service, to start our service this morning, uh, we want to pray together, we want to worship God, and I want us to go to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, I want us to read um, from verse 6 and 7. The Bible says in verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah 60 verse 6, the multitudes of camels shall cover thee and the dromedaries of Midian and Ephar all they from Sheba shall come they shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord I'm concerned about showing forth the praises of the Lord and you remember also in the scripture in the book of first peter chapter 2 I want us to go there book of first peter chapter 2 from verse 9 first peter chapter 2 verse um verse 9 the bible says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth praises of him that you should show forth praises of him um, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light we've been called out of darkness and we are in the light we are living in the light the duty for us as priests is that we should show forth his praises this is what i want us to begin by showing forth the praises that is the sole reason why god created us that we may praise him that we may show him uh, the, the the praises we may adore him we will lift up our hands we will worship him we will stand in his presence you can kneel down you can do all you can you can take any position but all we are doing is to show forth his praises to our God, the praises to our God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit for his goodness, for his greatness, for the work of his hands. We can see outside there in the buildings, uh, the, I mean, not just the buildings, but uh, the, you know, the nature, okay, the natural uh, trees, the mountains, the valleys, the great waters, the lakes, the seas, the rivers. All this is the work of the hand of God. We can actually have, we have every reason 
but just to praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning as we come before your presence. We know the Lord, oh my God, all these works that we see, oh my God, the beauty of the land and the trees and the vegetation, the flowers, the lilies, oh my God, is the hand of your work, oh my God, is the work of your hand, oh my Father. And indeed, we have come to show you praises come to show you that we recognize all the things that you have done by the by your hand oh my god in creation the work of creation including oh my god the creatures that you have made oh my god is for the praise of your holy name and let every breath everything that has breath praise thee oh my god today this morning oh my god as we come before your presence oh my god we offer unto you a sacrifice of praise we offer unto you oh god an offering of thanksgiving oh my god as we enter the gates of god we enter in we come in oh god with praises in our hearts oh god oh my father out of the abundance of our my hearts oh god oh my father the mouth is speaking out oh god is proclaiming your good Goodness, is proclaiming your greatness is proclaiming your power we want to proclaim your lordship over every city over every nation over churches over the body of christ in totality globally oh my god even locally oh my father that he may have an influence over the face of the earth oh god be praised oh god in the cities be praised in the morning be praised in the noontime be praised in the evening be praised everywhere we go when we go out oh God and when we come in oh my God let the praises oh God of my father be continually on our lips oh God as your word says oh God your praises shall continually be on our lips oh God for the great and wonderful things that you have done how then shall we oh God my father speak oh God my father of anything else oh God except you oh God for you are the only Lord who is creator above everything else oh God you are the Lord of creation you are the Lord of promise you are the God of generations you are a covenant keeping God we uplift your holy name for all this oh my god for they are they are doing so god we praise you for your attributes oh god your goodness your mercies eh? you are your loving kindness oh my god yes oh my father they are loving kindness that is greater than life oh my god you are loving oh my god you are you are merciful oh god you are gracious oh my god you are powerful you are sovereign oh my god you reign forever from everlasting to everlasting you are oh God oh my father and we shall praise you oh God the children shall praise you oh God the mamas oh God shall praise you the fathers shall praise you the youths shall praise you the kings will praise you oh God oh my father even the creatures oh my God the deer that panteth for water oh my God shall praise you when they get the water so oh God oh my father the gazelles oh my God the giraffes oh God oh my father all the animals oh God that you feed oh Oh God in the pastures all over oh God my father you are the one who provides pasture for them you are the one who provides water for them we praise you for God for all for all this oh my God we are exalt you my God we appreciate your doing in our lives oh God my father we appreciate your dealings in our lives oh God my father to bring us forth oh God so the Lord may show you praises oh God unto you oh my God be all glory and honor and all the praise you are majestic in power you are full of power and dominion oh my god from now and forevermore for it is in jesus name we are prayed believing and trusting amen and amen as we continue on indeed i want us to dwell mainly on that scripture uh, isaiah chapter 60 uh, a lot of things that we need to pray about concerning the nation concerning at the church that God has said in his word. So I want to take you back again to that book of Isaiah chapter 60. And I will read on from verse 1 as we continue on to see what God is saying about his word. Remember, our duty is to make sure that what God has said in his word comes to pass. And his will be done here on earth as it is intended in heaven the bible says arise shine for the light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee just from that verse one up to verse seven 
I did a bit of some study on that scripture and I realized something very peculiar. There are special words that have been mentioned here. This is the word arise. And also there is another word shine or glory or light. Okay? And see or eyes or sight. No, those peculiar words are mentioned in this scripture from verse 1 up to verse 7. And to my amazing wonder and discovery is that the word light or anything related to sight or anything related to glory is mentioned 10 times in the, those few scriptures. That means the word glory has been mentioned uh, more than once in every scripture. Again, the word um, arise has been mentioned four times at least four times and also the word see see or sight has been mentioned four times very important so those are the key words in this particular scripture and i want us to pray something concerning arising of us as christians to arise and be able to shine arise shine those are the two words i'm concentrating for the light those three words arise shine for the light has come we want to pray that god will help us to be able to come to a position where he wants the church to be where he wants things done in the spirit and how do we arise we arise by doing certain things activities you know we arise by taking a stand on certain things as christians as the church we are supposed to stand against corruption we are supposed to stand against every evil in the land because the bible says in verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth verse 2 and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon the earth his glory shall be seen upon the earth we are servants of the lord who stand in the presence of god who stand in the office of the priest we were declared to be the royal priesthood our duty is to make sure that the glory of God is seen on the face of the earth as it is intended in heaven. That is our duty because there is darkness on the face of the earth. Darkness means evil. Darkness means ungodliness. Darkness means that which is not of God. That is not coming from God. If sickness is not the will of God. Poverty is not the will of God. Fighting is not the will of God. Violence is not the will of God. We want to pray against these things. By doing so, we are arising because we are standing against darkness. That means we are rising above that which is darkness, that which is ungodly, that which is evil. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence this morning. As we stand before your presence, we have such confidence that anything we pray that is not in accordance to your will, oh my God, every thought that is arising, rise and pretension that raises itself against what you have said. The Lord, oh my God, there shall be peace and anything rising against peace, oh my Father, we take our position, oh my God, even to be able to denounce it and renounce it. That is our duty, oh God, as we do it by the grace of God. By faith we believe you, oh God, that it shall come to pass. That anything we say here on earth, anything we bind here on earth, anything we do in your will, oh my God, it shall be done as you have said. The angels are on guard, oh my Father, to execute every word that we speak in accordance to your will, oh my God. And it is written, we shall have the peace of God. We pray for the peace in the land. We pray for the peace in the cities, oh God. We pray for peace in the hearts of men, oh my God. We pray for the peace, oh God, and righteousness, oh my Father, in the hearts of the people. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We know the Lord, oh my God, you are doing quite a lot oh my god the holy spirit is convicting the hearts of the people as you pray your will be done oh my god this is good and pleases god our savior who will have every 
every man be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Indeed, oh my God, as we pray, we know that the hearts of men and women and youths, oh God, shall be convicted of sin, shall be convicted of corruption, shall be convicted of bitterness, shall be convicted of malice, shall be convicted of anything that is against the word of God, my Father. And every pretension that raises itself against the knowledge of God, oh my Father, we rebuke, oh God, we condemn, oh my God, every tongue that is spoken oh God in judgment against the church any, any tongue oh God spoken in judgment against what your servants are doing what the church is doing oh God for the good of the nation my father we rebuke oh my father we come against oh my God we pull down oh my God and subject it to the obedience of Christ as we pray believing and trusting in Jesus name amen and amen and as i said you're not going outside this scripture we're going to pray isaiah chapter 60 as we go on in the presence of god i want to take you to another level of prayer i want just to pray concerning the government policies the government authorities first of all the bible says in verse 3 of chapter 60 verse 3 of chapter 60 in the book of Isaiah and the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of thy arising the kings speaks of authorities in governments and in countries all over the nation this of course was speaking about the nation of Israel but Israel is a symbolic of the church on earth or symbolic of a nation representing godliness on earth so wherever israel is mentioned is a symbol is a representative of god's government as it is intended in heaven and actually the kings shall come to the brightness of the arising as we arise in other words as we rise up against the evils of the land god will help us to be able to do that which is his will on the face of the earth let's take another scripture here before we go to the last prayer and this is still in the book of isaiah and because of time i don't think we'll be able to um um go speak of other things much much better let's go to the book of um uh, 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 from verse 10 the same chapter foreigners will come to rebuild your towns i'm reading from new living translation version the foreign verse 10 verse 10 of the book of isaiah chapter 60 foreigners will come to rebuilding your towns and their kings and their kings hallelujah and their kings will serve you. How many nations do we have? Whose president or whose king is not serving them as they should? Until people keep complaining about what the government is not able to do. What the government should do. I want to say this. It is God's will that kings serve people they hold responsible to. For thou, for though I have destroyed you in my anger. I will now have mercy on you through my grace. I want us to pray. Your gates will stay open. I want to say this concerning the church. Verse 11. Your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession for the nations that refuse to serve you will be destroyed of course as i said this is talking about israel now i just want to specifically pray about that that indeed we shall enjoy the services from our leaders as it is intended god is aware of governments that are unruly Governments that are rebellious. Governments that are not serving people as they should. Governments that are not supplying the need to their people as they should. And it is our duty to pray that these things be done as it is intended in heaven. It is God's intention that 
people in the nations don't die of hunger don't die of poverty because of poverty and poverty is a result of poor governance now we can pray so that kings can serve the way they should as the scripture says it is our duty to make sure that what god has said in his word should come to pass and i am basing my prayer on verse 10 as we have said the, the foreigners gates will be open we want to pray that churches be open right now churches are, churches are closed but we can pray according to the word of god that your gates be open day and night day and night not at any other time shall we have churches closed and worship houses closed down it is the will of god that our gates the gates of the church be open day and night so that we can receive the inheritance of god father we praise you and exalt you we are standing on your word of promise according to isaiah chapter 60 and verse 10 oh my god concerning the state oh god of churches right now that are closed down oh god because of the pandemic of uh, coronavirus so my father it is your will the lord oh my god gates oh god be open day and night oh god for your people to worship you that they may give bring offerings oh god to your house and to the altar and indeed oh my god we are doing this not because of our selfish gain but this is what your word says oh god and as we pray we believe the lord angelic strength shall be released oh god angelic oh god grace shall be shall be released oh god oh my father to open the gates of churches oh god wherever people are oh god ready to worship you them that have a desire to come and worship you oh god that they may worship you you did the same in the land of egypt oh god you released the children of israel from the land of captivity to come and worship you oh my god to come and worship you you said let my people go that they may worship me and indeed we are praying that the lord the gates oh god shall be opened oh god not only the gates that are physical but the gates of the hearts of the people shall also be opened gates oh god to the souls that are dying in sin oh god and wickedness oh my god we pray that they be open they'll be open not for a time and close again but the hearts of the people will be open to worship you we are praying therefore for, for salvation of souls we are praying oh god for redemption we are praying for healing we are praying for redemption oh god we are praying for restoration in the church oh god may your glory be seen as we do this oh my god we believe the lord oh god you are for us and if you are for us oh god nothing shall be against us oh god we thank you and we worship you for we are prayed believing and trusting in jesus name may i take this opportunity once again to thank you very much for being with us in this particular prayer session and now we move on to another session that is very important and that is praise and worship and may I take this opportunity and it's my great pleasure to let the uh, tabernacle of David, the TOD, to come and lead us in praise and worship. May God bless you as we continue with the service. And I believe that God is going to bless you with the word of God as we shall be listening. Thank you very much. Amen. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to today's online service. Let's give a shout unto the Lord as we praise Him, for He is worthy to receive our praise. Let's dance unto Him this morning. Tu as 
everlasting Father. You are great, you are mighty, oh God. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for your abundant love, for your amazing love, everlasting King of glory, for your presence, oh Father. We thank you, oh God, for you have been our God. You have been good to us, O King of glory. You have never left us. You have never forsaken us, O Father. And we praise you and we worship you, O King of glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you all the adoration, O God. For there is none like you. There is none that can be compared unto you, Jesus. We praise you and we honor you, God. You are our Father. You are our King. You are our Lord, O God. Praise you and we honor you, Jesus. You are a great God. You are unexplainable, oh God. Your love is amazing. We honor you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord. How can I?
withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender, I surrender all to you, everything I give, everything I give. to lead us and to show us the way even that we should go. Father, we thank you so much and we honor you because you are a good God even unto us. In Jesus' name, have we prayed and have we worshipped this morning. Amen. We thank God so much for this good time that we have had even in time of worship, in time of praise. I believe you have been blessed and you have been able to uh, take time even to worship God wherever you are this morning. We want to welcome each and every one of you for our service. We want to thank you that you are there listening. You are there opening your heart to receive from God. And I know that you will not remain the same because we serve a God who is good. We serve a God who is faithful. This is the fountain of Wisdom Chapel under the fountain of Wisdom Ministries. And this morning we are glad to come before you to come right into your houses even to be able to worship together with you as we uh, lift our voices unto the Lord and also as we open our hearts to be able to receive from him. In Fountain of Wisdom, we have a mission, and that is to reach out to the unreached, to church the unchurched, and to establish believers in the knowledge of truth. We are praying that you will be able to receive that that God has for you even this morning. And so I want to welcome our speaker today. We have... Uh, none other than our mother, Reverend Funke Ewosho, who has been sharing with us a series, and she's going to continue even today. Let's be there to receive from God. Let us open our hearts, because this is a seed that, is plant, that God is planting in our hearts, that we may be able to grow and be what God wants us to be. May God bless you as you listen to the word. You are most welcome, and we thank God for our speaker. We thank God for our mother. We thank God for the message that is going to come forth even for us today. May God bless you, and you are most welcome. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalm 23, verse, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. Some people are waiting for the enemies to die before they will come to the table 
you know, or some people when they are seated at the table, instead of them concentrating, focusing on what is on the table and eating what is on the table, they allow themselves to be distracted. And that's the work of the enemy. One of the major schemes of the devil is to cause distractions. On that table is healing. On that table is health. On that table is favor. If we would just focus on what's on the table and keep eating. Because God has prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemies. He said he's going to bless you and the enemies will see it and will gnash their teeth. There's nothing you can do about that. You, you can't help the devil. There's nothing you can do about that. That's the truth. You know, Joseph was given a coat of many colors. You know, you, you, you cannot, if the enemy is gnashing his teeth and is envious and jealous and he's sad and sorrowful, it's a pity. You, you can't help him. You just focus on what is on the table. Health is on the table. Healing is on the table. Forgiveness is on the table. Just go ahead and eat. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Jesus, Jesus was anointed by God. He went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And don't forget that you have the anointing within, you have the anointing upon. The anointing within, the Bible says you don't need anybody, you know, you don't need to be deceived because there's an unction that teaches you all things. Jesus said the Holy Ghost, when he comes, he will teach you all things. He will show you things even in the future. Things about the future. The Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians that the things even that your eyes have not seen, that your ears have not heard, that's not even entered into your mind of those things that God has prepared for those who love him. The Bible says those things are revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. We have not received the spirit that is of the world, but the spirit that is from God. Amen. So, by the anointing, God has made you stronger than the devil. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost teaches you all things. You know things. How do you know? Just say, I know. The only the knower lives on my inside. You remember the story of that guy, you know, the king of uh, Syria. He will be in there in his, in his bedchamber planning an attack against Israel. And you know what? God will reveal it to Elisha. And Elisha will tell the king of Israel. And the king of Syria was like, who is leaking our secret? They said, uh, the one that is doing this thing is not any one of us here. But there's one prophet. There's somebody, in, you know, the prophet in uh, Israel. And you know what the king of Syria did? He sent a whole battalion to go and arrest one man. You know, I told you about Samson the other time. How was there many thousands, three thousand of his brethren came to arrest him? You know, so when they sent these people and they came, and when Elisha's servant saw, he was scared. This is not the time to be scared. You see, if you didn't know God, you would be scared. You would be scared. The psalmist said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So this guy was scared in the natural, rightly so. And Elisha told him, those who are with us, there are more. I want you to know that you have more working for you than what you have working against you. God has made you stronger than the enemy. And then he prayed, he said, God, please open the eyes of this guy so he can see. Because some people, they have the faith of Thomas. They have to see. I'm sure you remember, you will know that even if, El if Elisha's servant had not seen physically, that the whole place was full of angels, it didn't change the fact that the whole place was full of angels. When God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, either you see an angel or not, he said he's giving his angels charge over you, and they keep you in all your ways. In your path is life, and there is no death. Amen. The third thing is by authority. And I said de authority is delegated power. Psalm 18, 9, 24, by, but by my faithfulness and my, and my mercy, shall be with him. But my faithfulness, sorry, and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name, in my name, his horn shall be exalted. In my name, what does that mean? NIV says, my faithfulness and unfading love will be with him. And by my authority, I will, sorry, by my authority, he will grow in power. Authority is delegated power. 
Go in my name means, look, I'm giving you the authority. You can act on my behalf. Jesus said, in my name. Go in my name. So the psalmist, God is saying to David about David. He said, by my authority, he will grow in power. By God's authority upon your life, you will grow in power. Jesus spoke with authority. He commanded the seas and they obeyed, the storms they obeyed. By the authority of God that he has placed over you, you will grow in power. Amen. And don't forget that you've already been given the authority to cast out devils, to heal all manners of disease and cast out all kinds of, all demons. Not just the ones from, the time people say that, well, my anointing only works, you know, over demons that speak um, whatever language. Hey. All demons, is that okay? Is that from the village? Or wherever they came from? All demons. And like I said to you, that it, you know, don't let the devil lie to you and say, well, Jesus was speaking to his disciples then, not to everybody. In Mark 16, 15 to 18, and he, Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. Those who believe. That is those who believe through you, my disciples. My first hand disciples. Jesus had us in mind. He knew that there were people that would believe down the line. Praise the Lord. And so he had us taken care of. He said, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And the Bible tells us in John 1, 12 that as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the rights, the authority, power, privilege to become children of God. So if you believe in Jesus, you have the rights, you have the authority so that authority has been conferred to you. The name of Jesus belongs to you. And whatever that name represents, whatever that name can do, you can do. John 14, 12 to 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, not just, oh, he was speaking to his disciples. Do you believe in Jesus? Then this applies to you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Can someone say amen? So it's not a case of, oh, you know, Reverend Mother is able to do that because she's Reverend Mother. No, no. You are able to do it because you believe in Jesus. I'm able to do it because I believe in Jesus. Amen. He said the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this, he will do. Can someone say most assuredly, because I believe in Jesus, the works that Jesus did, I will also do. And greater works than this, I will also do. Because Jesus has gone to the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he has sent the Holy Ghost. He lives in me. Amen. I said, so whatever you ask in my name, can you see in my name means in my authority. In my name means representing me. It's like when somebody has a power of attorney to act on behalf of somebody. They have the authority. They will come in their name. They will do stuff. That's why Jesus Christ said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Because when you ask in his name, you are bringing him on the scene. And then he is the one doing it. Praise the Lord. You have his authority. Can someone say, by his authority, he has increased my power. He has given me power. That's what that Psalm 89 says. He said, by my authority, he will grow in power. Can someone say, by Christ's authority, I am growing in power. Amen. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Then number four, I said, by the weapons of our warfare. Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 4 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Old King James says, mighty through God. 
through God. It is our weapons are not mighty in us or through us. It is through God. That phrase, through God, that is the, 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 the real thing, the substance. He is the one who has made us stronger than the enemy. The weapons of our warfare, those weapons must be channeled through God. They must be channeled through him. Psalm 60, verses 11 to 12. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. That's true. The help of man is useless. Some people, all they can come up with is what one uncle can do for them. What one friend, oh, there was a friend I helped some time ago. Oh, there was this, there's this friend, there's this uncle. Oh, my family members. Oh, oh I have uh, my family members, they are rich. That's all they can come up with. The Bible says the help of man is useless. The help of man is useless against coronavirus. The help of man is useless when it comes to certain things. And let me say something to you. When it comes to spiritual warfare, your pedigree does not count. Who you are in the flesh. You see, that's how they say spiritual warfare. Who you are in the flesh does not count. It makes no difference. The money in your account does not count. Is that okay? Let's understand that. Give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. If all you're thinking of in your brain, your mind is full of, oh. You know, some people, as soon as they have a problem, they don't even pray. The first thing they think of is, oh, I miss somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you better get a life. Give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. Through God. We will do valiantly. Some people don't pray until when everything is almost over. Then they remember that they can pray. But the first button they are pressing, oh, making phone calls here and there, calling this person, calling that person, when you could have simply prayed, first of all. God is not your last resort. He's your first point of call. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why some of us have found ourselves where we have found ourselves. Because, you know, you, you run around, run around. It's when men cannot help you, you now fall on God. And people will not say, oh, and that person, such a, such a lovely Christian. Oh, oh, and a pastor. Oh, uh, uh, you don't know. Oh, and the person loved God. Did you know their heart? You know what God said? You know, this scripture, we all like quoting it. When God said, God, when the Bible says, the eye of the Lord runs to and fro through the whole earth. And, God, and that he wants to show himself on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal towards him. You know, it was a word of rebuke. When this king had problem, he began to call for, for, to other nations, to other kings to help. And God now said, you know, because you did not seek God, you're going to have problems. You're going to have wars. For God's eyes go to and fro. That's what I always tell people when I'm sick. Before I go to doctors, I pray. And while doctors are even attending to me, my trust is in God. And then when you trust God, he can give, you know, ideas to the doctors. He can instruct them. Can tell them, you know what, don't give her that medication. Give her this one. Why? Your trust is in God. When you trust God, then you free God to influence people in a more effective way to help you. I'm sure we've received that. So the weapons of our warfare. Romans 16, 20 says, and the God of peace will cross Satan under your feet shortly. Under whose feet? Your feet. Under your feet. Jesus said he will trample under your feet. Psalm 91. You trample the cobra, the lion, under your feet. So under your feet. Amen. Through our God, we will do valiantly. The God of peace will, will crush coronavirus under our feet shortly. Amen. 
What are those weapons? We've talked about them extensively most of the times. I'll just refer to them and give you just one scripture. The name of Jesus. We just talked about God's authority. When we're talking about by my authority, he will grow in, in, in power. When we're talking about God's authority, which is delegated power, we've talked about the name of Jesus. But write down Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him the name, the name, which is above some names, a few names, every name, every name, every means every. Hallelujah. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name. That is above every name. Whenever I have any challenge, I'm like, no matter what your name is, the name of Jesus is above you. By that name of Jesus, God has made you stronger than that situation. You can bring that situation under in the name of Jesus Christ. You resist the devil in the name of Jesus and he will flee from you. It says in verse 10 that at the name of Jesus... Every, not some, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven, some translation says of the beings in heaven, things in heaven, beings in heaven. This is not talking about heaven where God lives. It's talking about the heavenly places. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians chapter 6, but against principles and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of, of wickedness where in the heavenly realms, in the heavenly places. So the name of Jesus is above the name of beings in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. These weapons are mighty through God. Don't go against the devil in your own name. He's just going to look at you and laugh. You, you, you remember the story of Goliath and David. You know, when David showed up, what did Goliath do? He laughed, looked at him. I mean, this was a guy, a giant. You know what we're talking about here? His spear was so big that somebody has carried it. This guy was not just tall. He was a giant. So when David showed up, because he thought David was trusting in those staves and sticks, and he laughed. He laughed him to scorn. You know what, you know what David said? You come against me. With all the spears and everything. But I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to feed your carcasses to the birds of the air. David wasn't trusting in the sling and five stones. He said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I tell you, we have been made stronger than the enemy by that name. We have the name that is above every other name in the name of Jesus Christ. So, every initial bow of things in heaven, those on earth, and of those under the earth. Well, the fish is in the frog. Your problem is under the sea. They went to bury the problem under the sea. I don't care where they buried your problem. Either it is air force, it is flying in the air. Either it's, even if it's on the earth, if it's under the sea. The name of Jesus transcends, transcends all realms of existence. And you know what? That name receives attention in heaven. Angels bow at that name. Angels respond at that name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into that name and they are safe. You run into that name and you be safe. Run into the name of Jesus in this time of coronavirus. Run into that name and be safe. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The second one is the word of God. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Psalm 119 verses 97 to 98. How I love your Lord. It's my meditation all day. Verse 98. You through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. Instead of the enemy outwitting you, outsmarting you, you outsmart him. 
You are wiser than the enemy. Hallelujah. You know, when you are wiser than something, that thing cannot defeat you. It cannot defeat you. You master it. Because you are wiser than it. You know, it's like when, you know, you see an older person and a younger person. And the younger person is doing, you know, maybe you are playing, you know, chess or whatever with a younger person who is an older person. And the guy is older than, wiser. Not just because of age and you are making all the moves. And, you know, the guy is making you feel like you are winning and you are feeling cool. And the guy just brings out an ace. And that is the end. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. You see, God has made you wiser by his commandments. He said, they are ever with me. Make sure God's commandments are ever with you. You know, when Jesus faced the devil in the wilderness, what was he saying? It is written. It is written. Satan has no answer to the word. He has no argument against the word. Once you bring it is written, that is the end. Hallelujah. The next statement is going of another conversation. That's the truth. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Praise the Lord. In Acts 19, I like this, verse 20. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. You must let the word of God grow in your mouth. Let that word grow in your heart. When that word grows mightily, it's going to prevail against whatever you are going through right now. It's going to prevail against the circumstances you are going through. I've been through stuff. You know, sometimes you, you, you feel sick in your body and it's as if, oh, is this thing not going to go? But just keep speaking the word. Keep declaring that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. Keep meditating in the word. Keep listening to the word. Keep feeding on the word. Give no attention to the pain. Give no attention to what the devil is trying to tell you. Give no attention to what, whatever anybody is saying to you. That word is growing. Like the hair of Samson. That word is growing and it's going to prevail against that situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep speaking the word. The scripture that came to me, 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1. Now there was a long war. I don't know, I don't care how long the war is. I don't know how long, what you're going through, how long it's been going on for. The Bible says, now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger. Can someone say, I'm growing stronger and stronger? That's your portion. That's your destiny. He said, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Praise the Lord. So you're going to keep speaking the word. Hebrews 4.14 says, seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. You're going to hold fast your confession. Hebrews 10.23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Don't waver. The Bible says, they, um, Abraham believed God. He did not waver. Through unbelief. Don't waver. He said, let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. I said something earlier on. The, um, when I was rounding up on Sunday in the part three. I said there's a difference between positive confession and confessing the word. Some people think, well, once I just speak positive words, oh, it's going to be good, it go better, you know, we thank God, a silver lining at whatever, we see the light at the end of the tunnel, oh, don't worry, don't worry, oh, you will be fine at the end of it. You see, positive confession, at least it's better than negative confession. But when we talk about confessing the word, it's not about positive confession. The word of God is positive, but the word of God is more than positive confession. It is confessing the word of God. By his stripes I am healed. Why is he powerful? Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick, is alive, it is powerful. 
sharper than any two-edged sword. That word of God, when you are speaking it, my God, it is active. It is operative. Hallelujah. It is living. The word of God is alive. The word of God is cutting through. The bone, the marrow, separating stuff. Hallelujah. Whatever the problem is, is going into that place. Either it's in the marrow, it's in the bone. Whatever it is, the word of God can permeate. Permeate any realm of existence. So it is not about positive confession. Oh, you will be okay. Oh, we'll be right. Everything's going to be all right. Look, it's not, it's, it's not that. Don't waste your time, okay? Where the word of the king is, there is power. Don't waste your time, you know, trying to just speak positive words. Anybody can speak positively, okay? You don't need to be a Christian. There's nothing whatever about that. The word of God carries power. Hallelujah. That word is powerful. Keep speaking the word of God. It's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. It's going to prevail in the name of Jesus. And the third weapon there is the blood of Jesus. We've talked extensively, but I'll just give you scriptures. Revelations 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. NIV says they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. New Living Translation says, and they defeated. They have defeated him. This is in the past sense. They have defeated him. Who? The devil. Old Lucifer himself. They have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. That blood was shed for you. That blood was the price that was paid for you to be free from the hand of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. The Father has delivered you from the power of darkness. He has translated you into the kingdom of his Son, in whom you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. By that blood you have overcome the devil. Amplified Bible says, and they overcame, conquered him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. Keep testifying. Keep talking about what the blood has done for you. Keep breaking bread. Keep Taking the Holy Communion. And when you do that, the Bible says, anytime you eat the bread, anytime you drink the cup, you are announcing his death until you come. What are you doing when you are breaking bread? You open your mouth and you keep announcing that Jesus died for me. His death is my death. When he died, he redeemed me from the curse of the law by hanging on a tree. For the Bible says, curse is he who is hanged on a tree. When he was hanged on a tree, he bore my curse. He became a curse for me. So every time you are breaking bread, it's an opportunity to proclaim, to announce his death, to reenact his death until he comes. And you're also participating in the blood and in the body of Christ. And they have overcome, not about to. They have overcome, conquered him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. The TPT translation says they conquered him completely through the blood of the Lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. The last one I'm going to talk about as we round up is this. God has made you stronger than the enemy by increasing you. Hallelujah. Psalm 105 verse 24 says, He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. God has made you stronger than the enemy by increasing you. Increasing you in stature. Increasing you in wisdom. Increasing you in finances. Amen. Amen. Increasing you on every side. The Amplified Bible says, There the Lord greatly increases people. The more they oppress them, the more they grew. Is that not true? He increased his people and made them stronger than their oppressors. In Exodus 1 verse 7, But the children of Israel were fruitful. You are fruitful in Jesus' name. No matter what is going on around you, God is making you fruitful physically, emotionally, materially, physically, in every way, spiritually. Amen. He said, but the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. You're growing. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And the land was filled with them. The land was filled with the children of Israel. Anywhere they turned to, they saw them. Anywhere they turned to, they saw them. Then in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were. The Egyptians were in dread of them. In Jeremiah 29, 4 to 6, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, 
whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. So that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there and not diminish. You see, in this time of lockdown, there's a tendency. See it as people in Babylon, children of Israel in Babylon. There's a tendency for you to allow lockdown to become a knockdown. Don't let the devil knock you down. You see, like that woman in the book of, somewhere in Isaiah. He said, at the end, she said, when did I give birth to all of this? In the time of her destitution. Let your trials work for you. Make the most of this time. Make the most of this season. The way God made them stronger than their enemy was by increasing them. God said to them, when you are in Babylon, don't say because we are in Babylon, we are going to shut down. You know, some of you, when you have problems, you shut down. When you have problems, you, you, you throw in the tire. When you have problems, you stop reading your Bible. You stop doing stuff. Some of you have even stopped tithing and giving now because you are locked down. God will help you. The way God is going to make you stronger than the enemy is by increasing you. So this is the time for you to increase and not diminish. Can somebody say amen? This is time for you to plan big. Can somebody say amen? Write down Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 3 to 4. About the blessings. Amen. I'm not going to read it. God was saying things about it's going to bless you. Uh, bless your needing trough. Bless your needing bowl. Bless you going out coming in. The enemies that come against you who will cause them to be defeated. You know, before you, in the name of Jesus, God will, he said you will lend and you will not borrow. You see, this is a time for you to be increased. God is increasing you. Hallelujah. In this time, people are experiencing increase. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may establish his covenant, which is what to your fathers. Psalm 1. Two to three, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does, whatever he does, shall prosper. Whatever he does, shall prosper. And you know what I remember is the story of Jacob, Jacob versus Laban. In Genesis thirty twenty-seven to twenty-eight. Laban said to Jacob, please stay if I have found favor in your eyes. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. God blessed Laban because of Jacob. Jacob was working for him, working with him. Then he said, verse 28, what did Jacob, Laban say to Jacob? Name me your wages and I will give it. God has made you stronger than the enemy. Let's see what happens in Genesis 31. Verses 3 to 13, New Living Transition. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your father and grandfather, to your relatives and to your relatives there, and I will be with you. So Jacob called Rachel and Leah out to the field where he was watching his flock. He said to them, I've noticed that your father's attitude toward me has changed, but the God of my father has been with me. You know how hard, take note of all those things. You know how hard I've worked for your father, but he has cheated me. Changing my wages ten times. But God has not allowed him to do me any harm. God will not allow the enemy to do you any harm. Verse 8. For if he, your father, Laban, said, the speckled animals will be your wages, the whole flock began to produce speckled young. And when he changed his mind and said, the striped animals will be your wages, then the whole flock produced striped young. Verse 9. Verse 9, in this way, God has taken your father's animals and given them to me. Verse 10, one time during the mating season, I had a dream and saw that the male goats, I saw that the male goats mating with the females were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Then in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, 
And I replied, yes, here I am. The angel said, look up and you will see that only the strict, speckled, and spotted males are mating with the females of the of your flock. For I've seen how Laban has treated you. Verse 13, I am the God who appeared to you at Bethel. The place where you anointed the pillar of stone and made your vow to me. Now get ready and leave this country and return to the land of your birth. You know what happened here? God made sure that it was the, the ones, the animals that were mating were the ones that would bring increase to Jacob. No matter how much the enemy has dealt with you, cheated you, you know what? God has made you stronger than him by increasing you, by multiplying you, by making you fruitful. I want us to bow our heads in prayer. God has made us stronger. You know, the Bible says the more they oppressed them, the more they grew. The more they grew. The more they grew. Maybe you are at a disadvantaged position by virtue of your race, by virtue of your gender, by virtue of your color, by virtue of your tribe. Maybe you are in the minority or whatever it is. But you know what? God is making you stronger by increasing you. You have a covenant with God. He's the one that has given you power to get wealth. Jacob worked hard. You must be diligent. The diligent hand will bear rule. A man that is diligent will stand before kings and not ordinary men. You be faithful. God is going to fight for you. He has made you stronger than the enemy. Give me those five points again. How he has made you stronger. Are they five points? The first point is by Jesus, the stronger one, defeating the enemy for you. Number two, he's made you stronger than the enemy by the anointing, which is the power of God. Number three, by his authority, which is delegated power. And number four, by the weapons of our warfare. They are mighty through God. And number five, by him increasing you. Expect increase in these times. Expect increase in this season. Expect increase in the name of Jesus. In your business, in whatever you are doing, either you have your private business or you're working somewhere, this is the time to expect increase in the name of Jesus. God is giving you divine ideas. God is enlarging your coast. This is not the time to hang. You know, you, you, you know, you know Peter said, you know, we've, caught, we, we've told all night and caught nothing. They had washed their net. They washed their boats. They hung up their nets. But Jesus came and he said, you let down your nets. This is not the time to hang up your nets. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Just bless the name of the Lord. Worship him. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all adoration. Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the word. Thank you for this series. Thank you for granting me utterance to bring the series even to your people. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We honor you. We worship you. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for insight and sight into what you're doing. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you for increase. Thank you for increase. Thank you, Lord, because by increasing us, you have made us stronger than the enemy. Father, we give you praise and we worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sure we have been blessed by this series. And our lives will never be the same again. God bless you. See you soon. so much for that good message that we have received. Indeed, we are blessed. And we thank God for our mom, Reverend Punke, the servant of God that has been able to uh, bless us this morning. We want to now give uh, our tithes and our offerings. And again, it is a wonderful time to come before the Lord in worship because giving is a way, uh, a form of worship even unto the Lord. I want us to remember that God loves a cheerful giver. And this time we want to be able to uh, give that that we can be able to give unto the Lord. I know that it's our hearts that are going to be involved even in giving. Whatever you're going to give will come from your heart know that God accepts the offering that you give. Just the way he accepted the offering of Abel, because Abel's attitude of giving was positive, 
he had a positive attitude. He was humble and committed to whatever God expected of him. He was able to give God the best and God blessed him. God accepted whatever he gave. The Bible says that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So each one of us must give as he has decided in his heart and uh, not reluctantly or under any compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. And so we are welcoming us to come and to give accordingly. The details for giving have been displayed on the screen. We can be able to send our tithes and our offerings either through uh, to the cooperative bank using pay bill number or M-Pesa, and the details have been put on the screen. You can also bring your offering to the church office that is here in Kapsoya, a place called Konakubwa. And those who are in the office will be able to receive accordingly. We want to thank you even as you give, and we want to pray that God is going to be able to bless you as you do the same. So let us pray even as we give. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you so much this morning. We bless your holy name because of your word that has come forth. We thank you that you have spoken unto us, O God. We thank you that you have ministered unto each and every person that has been able to listen and to hear your word this morning. Father, we pray that we shall be doers of this word. We pray that we shall be able to continue even to meditate upon your word because there is a lot that we can be able to gain and to do even through putting your word in practice in our lives and in our hearts. We thank you for Reverend Mom. Thank you for her life, O oh God. Thank you for using her to speak to us. Thank you for your grace upon her life, O oh God. We pray that you will continue to minister unto her. You will continue to do good in her life. Your grace, O oh God, shall continue to abound even in her life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will continue to replenish her, to keep her in strength, O oh God, to keep her in good health, and to continue to lift her from one glory even to another glory. Father, we thank you for uh, this time, even as we have given. We want to appreciate all that you have done for us. And as we give, O oh God, let it be that 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 we have given shall do the work of the, of the ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you for every giver, each and every person that has given. May you bless them, Lord, and may you continue to multiply whatever they have and even to bless the work of their hands in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you because we have prayed, believing, and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God so much for that wonderful time. May the Lord really bless you as you give. May the Lord really bless you as you continue even to meditate upon the word. I want to bring a few announcements to us even this moment. Uh, the first announcement is that we shall be having our corporate prayers. And this will be on Thursday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. We have our corporate prayers every Thursday, and it runs from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. East African time. We are kindly asking each one of you and inviting you to join us for the same. Uh, even during this time <clears throat> of lockdown, let us not deny ourselves the opportunity to pray. Let us continue to avail ourselves. And as we have corporate prayers, as we pray together, God is going to listen to our prayers, and God is going to uh, guide us even as we pray and join our faith to pray for our families, to pray for the nation, and even to pray for the institutions and everything else. Kindly tune in in our channel as you can see displayed on the screen and you will be able to join us in prayers. We shall also do it through Zoom and you will be able to get the link early enough before Thursday so that you can be able to join us in these prayers and the Lord will really bless each one of you. Secondly, we are encouraging each one of us to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is Fountain of Wisdom Chapel Eldoret. Please subscribe so that we can be able to have the numbers that are required even for us to continue. Kindly follow on the screen the procedure of subscribing and you will be able to subscribe. And also share this information with your friends and with your colleagues, with your family members, 
and anybody else through this contact so that they can be able to join us also for service even in the coming Sundays. We'd like to remind each one of us that we shall most likely be having a, a service in church this coming Sunday and those who are able to come to church, we welcome you for our Sunday service next Sunday and also for those who may not be able to join us we shall still be having our online services so whichever is going to be convenient for you please be free to do what you can and i believe that god is going to bless each and every one of you thank you very much and may god bless you we have come to the end of our service and now i want to be able to share with us the word of benediction even as we finish may the lord really uh, bless each one of you the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of our lord jesus christ be with us now and forevermore amen god bless you have a blessed week <music>